So the next thing we'll do is I'm going to end up removing the title from here. I'm going to put that title inside of this. So I may as well just do that right now. First we'll go over to the widgets. I want to have a little bit more control over the location of the title. So what I'm going to do here instead of this is take that and then inside of this here I'm going to do an H3 and paste that and then another H3. So I've got the, essentially the same thing going on here. We've got an H3 tag uh, with our get our ref free report now, but now it sits inside of that one side. Hit save. And then refresh that. Okay, there we go. So now I think actually we need 20 pixels up above this too, but that does look better. So we come back over here and add 20 pixels of padding. Okay, so we have a decent little box arranged here. Now I want to show you some of the other features of this. Let's say for example that we can round the corners of this if we wish. So for example we could come over here and say give ourselves a 10 pixel corner radius and hit save. Refresh that. And now we've got a nice little corners there. And in fact it could become you know quite a bit bigger if we wished it to. It almost looks like maybe because of the width here maybe we should shove that over another 20 or 30 pixels as well. I almost wonder if what we should do is just measure that. See how much uh, space I have there. Let's see. Use this measuring tool. Okay, so I've got 60 some odd pixels there. So, and I've got 20 there. So let's just add 60 pixels and see what happens. So in terms of padding, the left padding instead of 20 pixels will make 60. Let's see if we get that to line up nicely. Well, I'll offset it a little bit. So maybe take it down to 45. We won't fiddle with this too much, but the thing is that uh, this web form is automatically centered in the space that's available to it and so as we reduce the amount of space available to it it moves but actually that looks pretty good now doesn't it okay so we've got some rounded corners now if we wanted to we can also add a border to this and if we made our say we make our border with three pixels and we take the border background color and make it a you know, a darker color there and then make it solid and hit save. You know, now our little form has a, a border around it. And we can also add a drop shadow to this. So, drop shadow contains two elements. It's got, well, it actually contains three. It's got a width, a blur, and a color. So, we'll say, uh, we'll give it a width of, let's give it a width of three pixels a blur of three pixels and let's give it that as its color and hit save come over and refresh it now we should get a nice little drop shadow around there we do so now that stands out a little bit more and then if we wanted to we could use a, a CSS3 gradients to change out this button to make a nice looking button for this. So I'm going to just do that real quickly as well um, just for grins. It's not exactly on topic here but nevertheless I still want to show you how to create a button using that CSS3 gradient generator. So if we for a moment grab our color here, it's that dark red color, grab that color 
and then come over to this site that is CSSTricks.com examples button maker and then for the top gradient color let's make that the top gradient color for the bottom gradient color we're going to pick the same color and then we're going to make a lighter version of the top gradient so here we are right here that's that top gradient color I'm just going to push it up there for the top gradient and hit select so you can see what it looks like now then the top border color I'm gonna do that but instead of being that dark color I'm just gonna push it up quite a bit lighter so we get a little lighted effect there and hit that now the hover background color right now goes back to the blue so I'm going to go back to that hover background color and paste this dark color there and you know I guess that gray looks just fine this way so now all I want to do is just change sizes of stuff so this is going to make the text bigger this is going to make the edges a little bit rounder this one makes the padding around it bigger. I think we're good right there. We could change the text like that as well, but I think I'm just going to leave it just like this. And now, once you've got it the way you want it, if you click View the CSS, you can come over here and copy the CSS. And then go to your CSS style sheet for this thing and paste it. Now we're not using the active condition so I'm just going to delete that. But now we've got a CSS for this and now we just need to add the right selector. It's for button but obviously it's probably not button so we'll pick the right selector for this. And the right selector for this is inspect element and this is input class equals submit so I guess what I would do is div class af element dot button container and then input dot submit so that looks like this instead of button we'll paste that now we need the af button element dot button container and then space and then input dot submit and then we'll just copy that whole thing one more time and we will replace everything but hover here and then what we'll do is we'll just test this before we actually save this we'll just copy that and test it in our web developer so edit CSS and then in custom CSS if we just paste that okay so keep me informed it's interesting that the text color isn't changing the background color is but the text color isn't changing and what we really wanted well so maybe we have to put dot custom in front of this There we go, that's what we have to do. Um, dot custom. Uh, because, and it's still not changing the colors. Um, so if we want to change the, the font size, is still not getting changed. I guess it really wants to use this. Uh, element name in front of it so we have custom space that there it is that was it had to find the right combination of things but now it looks right I think the only thing I want to do is add uh, hover is add the cursor uh, pointer there we go 
So now we have this rounded CSS3 button. So we can just go ahead and copy this and paste it back into our custom CSS file. Hit save. Open up FileZilla and upload it. And this thing should work nicely in our site. Okay, there we go. Although, uh, really, it doesn't look very good in this version of Chrome, does it? Isn't that unfortunate? might want to get rid of the box shadow there. I think sometimes the text shadow doesn't render very well in Chrome and I'm not sure why but I think that's probably what's going on here is that Chrome is not handling that very well. If we took a look at this here and we just go to not box shadow but text shadow and delete that and hit save and then upload that sometimes these CS with these CSS3 things you have to you have to um, they don't always work as well as you'd like them to do in every browser so yeah see there that looks a lot better now so anyway, that's how you can take one of these generic uh, buttons from Aweber, an Aweber form, and put that in there. And what we've got now is a you know, skeleton of a call to action here. You can do just about anything you want with this. You know, it doesn't have to be, you know, as simple as this. It could be just about anything. Anything you can do in a widget, you can do in this area. Anything you can do with a text widget, you can do like this. And so. That's the first application.